Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 373. What's going on, everybody? So I just spent the last hour speaking with Lisa and Jen from the Prince and the Pervert podcast, and we were discussing all sorts of stuff, including what we're going to talk about in this article tonight. But before we get to that, I'd just like to give a shout out to Jen and Lisa for having me on the program. It's always a great experience to speak with my two favorite folks from down under, and they always uh, do a great job with their podcasts. So it's always a uh, pleasure to chat with them and to discuss this case and to discuss where we are, the current state of this case. And that's just what occurred for the past hour or so. Now, once uh, Jen and Lisa get the program all edited up and they upload it, I will also upload it here at the podcast for those of you who have not had a chance to listen to Jen and Lisa yet, perhaps. Maybe you'll get some exposure to them, their work, and their podcast, and hopefully you'll give them a like, a follow, check them out on Twitter, go ahead and subscribe to their podcast, and all of that good stuff because they deserve it. They're good at what they do, they bring some humor to the table, and they're actual, you know, journalists, as opposed to me, who is just a a loudmouth commentator. They're actually journalists. So, make sure you check that out when it uploads, and make sure, if you aren't following them or supporting their podcast, that you do that as quick as possible. All right, so... What we're going to talk about tonight here on this program is the fact that all of a sudden, Ghislaine Maxwell is talking about $30 million in bail that they've raised to put up for her to get sprung from the Huskow. Now, the main participant in raising this money for her bail is none other than Scott Borgerson. I remember there were some people who were thinking that Borgerson Wasn't Ghislaine Maxwell's husband? Well, this move would suggest otherwise, folks. $30 million is a lot of money to be on the hook for. And if you're raising this kind of money in hopes that she gets bail, then you have to have a lot of trust in that person, huh? Because if she jumps bail and she runs and she doesn't show up for trial, he's out $30 million. So you have to have a bit of trust in somebody to raise that kind of capital. Now, why anybody would have that kind of trust in a bipedal serpent such as Ghislaine Maxwell boggles my mind, but here we are. Needless to say, Scott Borgerson left his family for Ghislaine Maxwell, and now, all of a sudden, he's talking about $30 million, putting it up for her, and making it, uh... Her 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 uh, basis for bail. Pretty sure his kids could probably use that thirty million dollars in a trust fund, or a college education, or whatever it may be. And there's some people out there that might say, "Oh well, how do you know he didn't set that up for them already?" Well, jackass, how about he gives them a little bit more, huh? Instead, he's gonna raise capital to try and spring Elaine Maxwell out of jail for a few months knowing she's going back, right? At least in my opinion, there is zero chance that this lady doesn't get convicted of these crimes. If this tra- if this case is carried out in the proper manner and there's no uh, tomfoolery going on from the prosecutors, then there's zero doubt in my mind that Ghislaine Maxwell is looking at a very prolonged stay in a federal penitentiary when this is all said and done. So you're going to come up with all of this money for a few months just to get her out for a few months, huh? You must really miss her, Mr. Scott Borgerson. Our article today is from the Daily Mail. Headline, Ghislaine Maxwell and husband Scott Borgerson will put up $30 million bail and bid to get her home before Christmas. Isn't that just so cute? Doesn't that just melt your heart, folks? It's a Hallmark movie waiting to be filmed. These disgusting rat bastards. Home for Christmas. 
You don't deserve to be home for Christmas, Ghislaine. Not in my opinion. And the whole, this whole plot and plan to spring you for $30 million, I think it's a little short, by the way. Jeffrey Epstein was going to put up $100 million. He didn't even have a foreign passport, and that was considered not enough. So why would you think your small amount of $30 million would be enough? This article was authored by Daniel Bates. Ghislaine Maxwell will reportedly pledge a $30 million bail package to try and get free before Christmas, most of it from her new husband. And it's just, it's it's hilarious for me to read that, right? Her new husband, this Scott Borgerson character. This dude left his family, his wife of years and years, someone who, who he had kids with, for Ghislaine Maxwell. Can you imagine having such bad decision making that you leave your wife, who you loved enough, obviously, to have kids with, your wife who was there with you and rode with you while you didn't have anything and you were trying to build your fortune and your place in the world? You leave her for Ghislaine Maxwell. Talk about being a dumbass. The alleged chief recruiter for Jeffrey Epstein co-conspirator, fellow child abuser, general all-around scuzzbag and bipedal serpent, is married to tech entrepreneur Scott Borgerson, who DailyMail.com has exclusively revealed was her lover, and he is devastated she is behind bars. Oh boy, he's devastated, folks. I think everybody should all play the smallest, the world's smallest violin for him. Nobody cares if you're devastated, Scott Borgerson. You know who else is devastated? All of these girls that your wife, I guess, allegedly helped abuse, allegedly facilitated the abuse of. That's worthy of us feeling bad. That's worthy of us all being devastated. But you, Ghislaine being behind bars and you feeling sad about that? Nobody cares, bro. Maybe some of your naked volleyball playing friends in Martha's Vineyard care. But none of the rest of us care. The 99% of the rest of the world. He will put up a $25 million, $25 million as a security, which will be forfeited if she flees before trial, a report has claimed. So that's the $25 million tacked on to the $5 million she was originally going to raise. And my question is, Scott Borgerson was the CEO of Cargo Metrics, a company, right? And if you do a cursory look into Scott Borgerson, it shows you that his net worth is only $5 million. So where did he come up with this $25 million to put on the line for Ghislaine Maxwell in the first place? Now, I'm sure that that $5 million that we find on the internet of being his net worth isn't entirely accurate, but it's a, a decent guideline, right? A decent baseline, at least. So where's he coming up with this other $25 million? And how is it that his wife isn't going crazy, his ex-wife isn't going crazy about that fact? Don't you think that if he can raise $25 million to get Ghislaine Maxwell out of the Huskow, that his wife should get some more alimony? I know I'd be raising that stink if I was her. Oh, the kids need some more money, bruh. You got enough money to get Ghislaine Maxwell out of jail. Well, your kids need 87 pairs of Jordans. How about that? And furthermore, a $30 million bail? This chick jumped on me. If I was Borgerson, I bailed her out. Say she gets out and she jumps bail. You better believe I'm bringing in Dog, the bounty hunter, to chase her down. $30 million. The other $5 million will come from her siblings, including her brothers Kevin and Ian Maxwell, who, like Maxwell, are the children of the late disgraced British newspaper tycoon Robert Maxwell. Well, yeah, that's basically what it means to be a sibling, right? Your dad's the same, I mean, you know, or mom. So thanks for the explanation there, but... <laughs> so her family, obviously, is raising the other $5 million, And here we go. We have a merry little adventure. Operation Springy Lane for the Holidays. Isn't that nice? I'm sure she'll have herself a nice lettuce roast if she gets sprung, right? 
The package will be put before a federal judge in New York in the coming days, with the aim of getting Maxwell out of the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn in time for the holidays. That's exactly what Ghislaine is shooting for, right? She'd love to get out and spend Christmas thumbing her nose at the survivors, thumbing her nose at the justice system. All of this time, that's what she's been doing anyway. So why not put an exclamation point on it, right? Thankfully, I don't see Judge, Judge Nathan getting, uh, springing her here and letting her get this bail. I think it would have to be some serious circumstances for that to occur. We know that judges really don't like to go back on rulings that they have made previously. Once they set some precedent in court, unless new evidence has presented itself... Very rarely does a go, does a judge go back on what they have already said and make a ruling that runs counter to their original ruling. And I don't see Prescott doing that here. I don't see the situation calling for it. What are they going to say? The COVID outbreak? That's not going to work, right? She's already isolated. She's already by herself in jail. She has a better chance of not catching it in isolation here than she does at home, where she's running around and having people come and go all the time, etc., etc. So I don't really think that that's an argument that's going to hold sway. And also, she doesn't have any comorbidities, and we heard that in court papers the first time around. They made that very clear. So she's not really in jeopardy of... Um, uh, of mortality here if uh, if she gets this, right? This is not likely going to turn into something that would kill her, meaning COVID-19, according to statistics. So I don't really see the argument here. I don't see how they can make this argument and think it's going to stick. The report in the Daily Telegraph appears to confirm for the first time that Maxwell and Borgerson are married. Now, if you go back to when this all broke, we, we talked about this. And I definitely said that I believe Borgerson and her are married. And now we have that confirmation. Again, another little piece of the puzzle gets added to the overall picture. A little more context and a little more meat on the bone. Whenever we can hammer down some facts in this case and, and come to a conclusion that something is real or not, it's always a good thing. Because, as you all know, there are so many layers upon layers to this that you have to start pulling on all of the threads, right? There, because everything is related to everything else in this case. Prosecutors mentioned that Maxwell was married during her first bail hearing in July at federal court in New York. And back then, we knew it was Borgerson. And we called it, right? This just confirms what... We all knew, and when I say we, I don't just mean myself. I mean just about everybody I talked to. Everybody was on board pretty much that it was Borgerson. That was the consensus among independent content creators that I spoke with and listeners to our programs. So this is just a a confirmation of what we had previously known. Assistant U.S. Attorney Allison Moe said Maxwell makes no mention whatsoever about the financial circumstances or assets of her spouse whose identity she declined to provide to pretrial services. Well, that was a shrewd move on their part, right? Give them more time to stash some of their money offshore. Give them some more time to finagle a couple of bucks in the Cayman Islands or wherever the hell Borgerson has his offshore operation running. Because at this point, I'm operating on the assumption, at the very least, that all of these people are engaged in these offshore LLC shell company moves. And why would Borgerson be any different? So, who knows how much money has been moved around? Who knows how much money has been hidden here or hidden there or stashed in a war chest for this eventual outcome? We don't know, right? That That's speculation on my part, obviously. But you would think people engaged in such a long, expansive criminal enterprise would have a war chest for a rainy day. Mo did not say who, who she believed Maxwell's spouse was or give any indication as to how long they had been married. That's a fact. 
I listened in on that trial. We didn't have any confirmation of who it was then. And uh, like I said, we all had our guesses and speculation and we talked about it. But now we got that confirmation, apparently, from the article in the Telegraph and here at the Daily Mail. Maxwell and Borgerson lived together at their $2.4 million oceanfront home in Manchester by the Sea in Massachusetts, Daily, DailyMail.com first revealed, until she bought her own $1 million property in New Hampshire, where she was arrested in July. Now, the reason that I think they got that New Hampshire property, besides the proximity to the Canadian border, obviously, is because their cover had been blown at Manchester by the sea and people were on to them. So they had to find a new hideaway, a new hidey hole. So they chose New Hampshire, which just conveniently is a hop, skip and a jump to Canada, access to Montreal and then to France. And is buried away in a different place, more of a secluded area, and a place where their cover had not been burned yet. And you see the lengths that they went to to keep that cover in place, making pretend they were this British couple when they were buying the the property, etc., etc. So they were engaged in spycraft all the way to the very end. Earlier this year, Borgerson stepped down from his post as chief executive of shipping data company Cargo Metrics to ensure his presence would not become a distraction from the work he believes in so deeply, he said. Yeah, I'm sure he did that all of his own accord too, right? I'm sure his partners and associates didn't pressure him to do this. Please. You're not an honorable guy, Borgerson, all right? You're not going out with some humility. You're going out with egg on your face. You're going out because of your connections to Maxwell. And in fact, you chose your relationship with Maxwell over your position at Cargo Metrics and over your career. Because you're effectively done after this, I would think anyway, right? If there's no coming back for Prince Andrew, there's no coming back for Scott Borgerson if he married this bipedal serpent. Maxwell, a British socialite, co-conspirator, fellow child abuser, general all-around scuzzbag, and bipedal serpent, is accused of procuring girls as young as 14 for Epstein to abuse and perjuring herself in a separate civil case, and also partaking in the abuse as well. That's what the allegations say. Let's be very clear who we're dealing with here and what we're dealing with. She denies the allegations for which she faces up to 35 years in jail. During the last five months, Maxwell's lawyers and her family have begun what they call Operation Get Ghislaine Out because they feel she is being treated unfair. Oh, poor Mrs. Ghislaine, little Oxford girl. Not being treated fairly. Can't pop the bubbly. Not driving her helicopters around or flying her planes or tooling around in her submarine. She's being treated so unfairly. You know who was treated unfairly? The girls that were abused. The survivors. They were treated unfairly. You know who else was treated unfairly? The taxpayers who funded this whole entire debacle. So how about Operation Shut Your Face? According to the report, Maxwell will be willing to give up any right to prevent her extradition from France to try and persuade a judge to free her. Oh, that's a a new strategy, huh? Oh, I'll give up all of my ability to go to France, Mr. Judge or Miss Judge. Just, Just let me get out of jail, please. One last time, one jail out of free card. I really hope that Allison Nathan, the judge in this case, sees through this BS and does not give in to Ghislaine Maxwell or her pedantic attempts to try and get out of jail here. Maxwell, 58, has a French passport and there is no extradition treaty between the U.S. and France, which is weird to me, right? You would think a country, a countries like the U.S. and France that have such a storied history together going all the way back to the revolution you would think that there'd be this kind of treaty in place. But France don't play these kind of games, right? They're not, uh, they're not extraditing their citizens anywhere. And that's just the way France rolls. But I always found it interesting, considering the close ties of the two nations, that they couldn't hammer out some sort of uh, extradition agreement. 
a private security company stands to lose an additional $1 million if Miss Maxwell evades its surveillance. So a private security company, huh? I wonder who's getting rich off of that. Which one of their friends owns the private security uh, company? That's something we should dig into, all of you out there. All of you uh, 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 researchers out there who dig into this case. There's something for you. There's a little. There's something to dig into. I mean, what security company is it? Who runs that security company? Who's getting rich off of this? What's the bill? You know, all of that stuff, right? So that's the homework, folks. Let's dig into that and see what's what. The $30 million bail package is one of the largest in recent memory and dwarves the $1 million bail for Harvey Weinstein. It, it is a significant amount of money, right, as far as these things go. But again, I refer you to Jeffrey Epstein and the hundred million dollars bail that was placed that he was talking about and was still denied. So I would hope that they would use that as the precedent and not Harvey Weinstein or Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby was freed on one million dollars bail and he was later found guilty and jailed for 10 years. Bill Cosby didn't have a foreign passport. Bill Cosby was like 80 years old or some wild shit like that. He wasn't going anywhere. The guy's half blind, right? So they let him out on bail. Everyone knew he was going to jail. Ghislaine Maxwell is a different case. She has that French passport. And I don't care if she says she'll waive any right for extradition. What, her rich and powerful friends aren't going to hide her? Please. In the five months she has been in custody, Maxwell's family have become increasingly outraged at what they see as her unfair treatment. I don't care. Be as outraged as you want. Now you're getting a little bit of a taste of what the rest of us felt about her behavior and the way she was able to operate for years upon year upon year upon year after year. So now the shoe is on the other foot. Ghislaine Maxwell is the one suffering the brunt and now you don't like it? Now you have something to say? Where were all you big mouths coming out and offering your support to these survivors? She is in a 9 foot by 7 foot cell and claims she lost at least 20 pounds in weight and some of her hair because of the poor prison diet. So she's at 134. If she lost 20 pounds, that would have put her at 154. I highly doubt she was walking around at lightweight. All right, she's not fighting at 155. Highly doubt that's the case. Hyperbole by her lawyers and assertions. We have no evidence that proves any of those allegations, right? That say, oh yeah, she definitely lost this amount of weight. That's just what her lawyers are saying. Her lawyers have said that she has woken up every 15 minutes with a torchlight to be searched, even though she is not a suicide risk. They claim that the Bureau of Prisons is making an example of her to overcompensate for its failings, which led Epstein to hang himself in his cell last August while another federal prison, while at another federal prison in New York. I don't believe that's the case. I think that they could pitch it as, meaning the Bureau of Prisons, well, we don't want to see a repeat performance. So we have adjusted and tweaked our measures and what sort of protocols we use to protect somebody like Maxwell. And from what we have heard here, I don't think there's anything too uh, obtrusive. Uh, A flashlight in the cell every 15 minutes? Well, whenever the guards are doing their rounds, that's what they're supposed to do, right? Check on the inmates. They claim that the Bureau of Prisons is making an example of her to overcompensate for its failings, which led Epstein to hang himself in his cell last August while in another federal prison in New York. Brian Basham, a close family friend, who is orchestrating the Get Ghislaine Out campaign, said, The state has reverse-engineered the whole case to mask its failure. There was no indication that Ghislaine was in the frame at all whilst Epstein was alive. Holy gaslight, Batman! Brian Basham, do you really believe that? And if so, I would love to have you on the podcast to discuss that. 
So reach out to me. Let's let's set it up. You want to come on? You want a, a, an, a, an audience to listen? You got some evidence? Come on the podcast. I'm, I'm more than willing to hear what you have to say. But what I will tell you is this, my friend. You better bring your lunchbox because you won't get off easy here. There's no uh, easy path, right? There's hard questions only. And... The fact that you would even think to say that Ghislaine Maxwell wasn't in this conversation when Epstein was alive is laughable at best. How many of these girls have come out and placed Ghislaine as their abuser? So don't act like this is all new, a new revelation that just occurred. This is decades in the making, my dude. She had plenty of opportunity to flee, but she stayed put. Her lawyers knew where she was, but she hid from the tabloid press who were hunting her. One even offered £10,000, $13,000, for news of her whereabouts. She was never charged with anything. Yeah, because she was protected by the non-prosecution agreement, buddy. Can you deny that? You can't deny that. You're just going to throw these these, uh, platitudes out there and these straw man arguments out there in hopes that some of it will land. But... We're paying attention. We know what's going on. And the fact that a paper was paying to get information about Maxwell, what's wrong with that? And furthermore, how many articles have we read in the 850 plus that we've been through here that have said her lawyers couldn't find her? And in fact, she had to get served via email because her lawyers couldn't find her. Now, all of a sudden, her lawyers knew her her whereabouts at all times? Give me a break. Nobody's buying it, Brian Basham. Basham claimed that Epstein's death changed everything for Maxwell. He said, through appalling mismanagement, Epstein died in custody. The United States Attorney General William Barr has said he was livid about that and vowed Ghislaine will not be allowed to die in jail. That's why... Overzealous prison staff are waking her up every 15 minutes throughout the night and shining a flashlight in her face. You would think if this guy cared about Ghislaine Maxwell so much, and he was such a big supporter of hers, he'd want her not to die in jail. But it seems like they didn't want any new procedures put in place. Just drop her in the main line. In fact, put her in with men. Why don't you just put her in with Tartaglioni as well? It's all absurd. Their argument's absurd. Everything about Operation Springy Lane is absurd. And Brian Basham, you are absurd. Having lost the opportunity to boast brilliance in an all-singing and dancing trial, the state is covering its incompetence and embarrassment by demonizing Ghislaine, first in a show trial press conference, and now by incarcerating her, quite literally, in worse conditions than even the most dangerous terrorist. That's an absolute lie. You ever hear of a black site, Brian Basham? That's where the terrorists go, and I assure you, It is much worse than where Ghislaine Maxwell is sitting. The state is engaged in a near criminal conspiracy to mask its incompetence by keeping Ghislaine illegally imprisoned and by parading her as a proxy for Epstein with whom she had no relationship for years. Boy, this guy is really, really laying it on thick, right? I'd love to have him come on the podcast again, Mr. Basham. Come on the podcast if you would like, sir. I am sure everybody out there would love to hear from you. Because what you're saying here is, it's a bit much in my opinion. You're saying the state is engaged in a criminal conspiracy? That's a bit ironic considering who you're defending, huh? Dailymail.com first reported in 2019 that millionaire Borgerson who at 44 is 14 years Maxwell's junior, left his wife and mother of his two children for her in 2014. Isn't that nice, huh? Hell of a guy. (laughs) Hell of a guy. When the marriage finally crumbled, the Forbes records painted a disturbing picture of Borgerson with accusations of him being physically violent, abusive, extremely controlling, and having an alcohol problem. Well, perfect for Ghislaine, right? Two psychos together. Two peas in a pod here. Good old Borgie and Ghislaine Maxwell. 
Borgerson, who married his ex-wife, Rebecca, in Palm Beach, Florida in May 2001, once allegedly threatened her, saying, Don't make me beat you in front of the children. Oh, that's nice. A wife abuser and a child abuser. What a fantastic couple. These are the people that you should be championing. These are the people that you should be holding up on a pedestal, Mr. Basham and company. What an absolute shit show. Borgerson met Maxwell through speaking engagements connected to ocean preservation, a subject on which they share a passion. Oh, I guess they were both living on a yellow submarine together, huh? How cute. You imagine these two idiots chopping it up about the ocean? They both are pictured speaking at the Arctic Circle Assembly in Reykjavik, Iceland in 2014. Sources said that in Manchester by the Sea, Maxwell was a homebody who stayed at home a lot and did not leave the house. Well, yeah, hell no, she didn't leave the house. She didn't want to get outed. People were looking for her. People wanted to know what her deal was, and people wanted to know what the story was. But Maxwell continued to hide. The other five houses on the estate which overlooks the site where the USS New Hampshire caught fire and sunk in 1922, is owned by the Shelving Rock Trust, made up of descendants of former owners. Maxwell and Borgerson, a former U.S. Coast Guard lieutenant commander, fell out with their neighbors in February last year when they learned that the quiet, well-dressed woman in their midst had been accused of being Epstein's madam. Yeah, imagine. You come, you find out that Ghislaine Maxwell is living next to you. Just what you need. The press showing up, all the media everywhere, them asking you questions, and the stench of this bipedal serpent living next door. Yeah, that would not occur. I'd be confronting them as well. At the time, a resident told DailyMail.com, someone told one of the trustees that they should look into her background, and as soon as they did, they decided to act. Until then, they, the trustees, had thought they were a nice couple. They would often see them jogging together on pa- on the pass. They were allowed to use the tennis courts and gather firewood and use the beach. Ghislaine would often jog in town. But when they realized who Maxwell was, the trustees were revolted. So, that's definitely a good sign, right? The trustees here at Manchester by the Sea... They should get a nod of the cap, maybe a uh, some sort of uh, fruit basket for Christmas. They saw the writing on the wall. They confronted Maxwell and Borgerson about this nonsense. And in fact, they had to leave because of it. And guess what? The, the, Ghislaine Maxwell should not be invited back into polite society ever. She should never be allowed to take part in any of it. I'm sorry, but that is the penalty that you have to pay. And obviously, she's going to get her chance to defend herself in the trial, like every single person should. As of right now, she is innocent until proven guilty, like every other person who is awaiting trial. But it does not look good for her, right? It's not looking good for Ghislaine Maxwell. They wanted to ostracize them as much as possible and make them feel they weren't welcome on Shark's Mouth or in Manchester. They felt sex trafficking and pedophilia are the most disgusting things in the world and they wanted them off the property again. I love it. I'd be the same way. If I was a trustee and these people ended up falling in my lap in my in the midst of my community, not nope, zero chance they'd be out. I'd do everything I possibly could to get rid of them. There are certain things that are not acceptable, folks. Human trafficking, sex trafficking, pedophilia. These are things there's no coming back from. It's not like you were trading stocks and you were stealing. While that's scummy and shitty, there's coming back from that, right? I don't see you at a party and look at you in disgust after you've served your time for a crime like that. But if you're a pedophile, you're a human trafficker, a sex trafficker, forget about it. There's no coming back from it. Tensions ramped even higher in April last year when Borgerson sued the trust in the obscure land court in Massachusetts, asking to develop his garage. The trust sued back and accused Borgerson and Maxwell, who was named as a third-party defendant, of breaching development rules and for trespassing on their land by using a coastal path. 
But a, ju a judge ruled in favor of Borgerson and allowed him to, to develop the garage and keep using the path. Oh, I'm sure he did. I wonder who that judge was and what his connections to Borgerson's companies are or Ghislaine Maxwell's family is. And I know it's cynical to look at things like that. But if we haven't learned anything, if we've learned anything from this case, excuse me, it's that there's always another play behind the opening salvo. And for me, I'm always trying to read in between the lines and look a little bit further behind the curtain. And when it comes to Ghislaine Maxwell and Scott Borgerson and this whole entire movement to try and get her out of jail, I don't think it's going to end up the way they want it to end up. Now, again, that's just me speculating. It, they, she could totally get bailed out, right? And I could be off the mark. But as far as this has gone so far and the track record that we have seen so far in this case, as far as, you know, um, situations in front of Judge Nathan or Preska, it doesn't look good for Maxwell, in my opinion, folks. And I'm going to go out on a limb here and I am going to speculate that she'll be enjoying Christmas in that cell. And with a nice, thick, bologna sandwich. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this episode are in the description box. And for all of you who have donated to the podcast and supported the podcast, thank you folks very much. I will be back later on tomorrow morning, perhaps a bit later than usual. We'll see. I'm going climbing at about 3.30 in the morning, so I'll probably be, probably be home by 8 or 9 a.m. So there will be a flashback episode earlier, 4 a.m. or so, and then... If there is news that has to be gotten to, obviously, in the morning, we'll jump right into it. If not, we'll wait for the daily drop and we will pick up on whatever the news for the day has been. All right, everybody. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your evening and I hope that everybody enjoys their Friday morning. I will be back later on and we will pick the conversation up then.